What's the story, Morning Glory? What is the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of 90 Day, The Last Resort, Season 1, Episode 11, The Last Text. So let's talk about Ed and Liz. Okay, so the episode starts off with them playing life-size chess. And Ed asked... Liz, you know, how was girls night? And Liz says that um, they had a really hot waiter at the bar that they went to. And Ed asked her, is that waiter your type? And Liz says, no, I'm very curious. What is Liz's type? If she's about to or she's engaged to Ed and the waiter was not her type. I'm very curious. What is Liz's type? Again, Ed talks about how him and Liz, they're, they're the best couple at the resort because they have the strongest relationship. Ed has a very, very, very strong competitive streak in him. So he likes to boast about how he, her, him and Liz are like the number one couple, the strongest couple. Everybody else, their relationships are falling apart. Fine. Moving on from there, Kalani. So Kalani des decides to have an emergency therapy session with Oswelu because we found out in the previous episode, that which I didn't review, we found out in the previous episode that um, Kalani had went to go meet her her other dude Dallas because he flew into Florida and so she went to go see what she went to go see him and of course one thing led to another and Asuelu kind of had to put you know the pieces together because Alani Kalani was not being upfront with him with what she was doing because they have like a um a pattern at this resort every morning they talk he comes over to her room to watch the kids while she gets ready or whatever he brings her coffee brings her breakfast and so this particular morning you know Kalani was was MIA. He had no idea where she was. The sister wasn't saying anything. He didn't know where she was. She was acting really funny when he tried to call her. She wasn't answering, wasn't FaceTiming him. So he kind of like had to put the pieces together and figure out that maybe she was with someone else. So at this emergency therapy session, um, uh, she says that because she saw a Swelu, uh, deleting messages on his phone this kind of prompted her to unblock Dallas and to have this little secret rendezvous with him I thought that was a weak excuse by I mean of course Kalani and Oswelu do not need to be together because he's a serial cheater she doesn't deserve that I'm not taking that away from her that she does deserve someone who appreciates her more I just don't like how for her I just didn't like how dishonest she was about it because she should have just told us Welu, my dude is here and I'm gonna go see him um because she ended up telling him anyway at the therapy session just go ahead and tell him you know in your mind and in your heart that you're done with us Welu. just tell him the what's up you know just tell him what you were doing I don't understand why that had to be a big secret that's number one number two she says that, you know, Dallas came out you know he flew out to see her uh when she went to go meet him Kalani says that I just wanted to talk. I didn't expect things to go as far as they did. Kalani, a man is not going to fly out to see you just to have a conversation because I could have done that on the damn phone. So you know what the what's up was. You know why he was flying out there. So another, I have another issue with Dallas. What kind of a man would think it's okay to mess around with a woman who was still very much married. Yes, they're separated or they have issues or whatever they're going through, but she is still somebody else's wife. So what kind of a person is Dallas to think that it's okay for him to have this free for all relationship with a married woman? It makes me think that Dallas may have some red flags. It makes me want to tell Kalani to tread very lightly with Dallas. Maybe she can just use them to have a little fun or use them as the rebound man. But I would not encourage Kalani to take Dallas so seriously because he doesn't take the whole concept of marriage seriously. Because if he had any kind of morals, I'm thinking he would have been like, you know what, Kalani, I understand that there's something going on between us, but I would just feel so much better once you have cut off all ties with Asuelu, you know, physically, emotionally, legally and then you know me and you can go on and we do we can do whatever the hell we want to do I would have preferred it to go that way but I don't know I'm kind of looking at Dallas side eye even though I haven't really seen him I'm giving him the side eye because he's willing to mess around with a married woman who's got kids and I'm looking at Kalani side eye because she says oh I just went to go meet up with him because I just wanted to talk 
So um, Kalani tells Aswelu that it's too late, you know, because he says he's been trying, he's changed, he's trying to treat her better, and it's just too little too late. So Aswelu looks at her and he says, so do you want me, do you want to divorce me? And Kalani looks at him and gives him the slightest of nods and basically says, yes, she wants a divorce. She's ready for a divorce. Aswelu says that... Um, you know, he did the best he could. He tried to change. He tried to do this. He tried to do that. And Kalani was like, you know, it's just way too late. They have a great friendship, Kalani says. And, you know, they're going to co-parent really well together because they are friends. And, of course, they care about each other. But as far as being married to Aswelu, Kalani's done with that. Moving on from there, we have the group boat ride. So we have all the couples there except for Aswelu and Kalani because we're having their emergency therapy session. And they're talking about the whole strip club thing. So uh, Jovi had told Yara previously in their room that he was the perfect little choir boy in the strip club. He, he wasn't touching any of the dancers. It was just uh, Swelu and Ed that were very handsy with the strippers. He was on his best behavior. So on the boat... Yara, because she wanted to get to the bottom of it and to see if he was telling her the truth, Yara um, confronts Ed and says, hey, Jovi told me that he was a perfect little choir boy at the strip club and it was just mainly you and Oswelu who were touching the strippers. Ed gets upset about that because, you know, he's trying to, I guess, you know, work on his relationship with Liz. He thought he was being 100% upfront and honest with Liz by asking her permission to go to the strip club. He wasn't expecting Jovi to expose all that went down inside the strip club. So Ed wanted to retaliate. So then Ed tells um, Jovi, well, why don't you tell Yara who you were texting? Did you tell her about the stripper that you were texting that you wanted to uh, meet up with and hang out with and party with? last night so this begins a whole fiasco this begins a whole stripper gate fiasco so they're going back and forth you know yara gets upset about jovi wanting to always have to go to these strip clubs like what is your your thing with these strippers i don't understand you have a beautiful wife why do you always want to go to the strip club now jovi tells us that it's a cultural thing in this confession he says that in the u.s strip clubs are just for entertainment the rest of the world or maybe just in the Ukraine I don't know it's different stuff like that is really frowned upon but here in good old US of A strip clubs are just a form of entertainment you just go there just to have a grand old good time some good clean family fun so as um and don't forget you know um tablet Michael is there as well and he's participating so tablet Michael he's trying to ask Jovi a question and Jovi's trying to listen to what Michael is asking him and um Yara is also talking to him at the same time so he tells Yara to shut up because he's trying to hear what Michael has to say. So y'all, I'm not about that. I'm not about that at all. I think it's highly disrespectful, especially when you're in front of other people for spouses to tell each other to shut up. That is just highly disrespectful and very immature in, in a way. It's extremely disrespectful and immature. So he was like telling Yara to shut up. And Yara was like, don't you talk to me like that. And then um, Liz steps in and says, good for you, Yara. You're finally standing up for yourself. I don't think Yara has a problem standing up for herself. She doesn't have, I think maybe that's the reason why Jovi is always in the damn strip club. Because Yara speaks her mind and she tells Jovi exactly what it is all the time. I don't think Yara has a problem standing up for herself. So Ed brings up Jovi texting this stripper and how he was trying to get this stripper to come out with them and have a good time with them. Evidently there's history between Jovi and this stripper. I really couldn't quite understand what this history was. Supposedly Jovi and this stripper had traveled together to Jamaica and they had a, they hooked up at one point, I'm assuming way before he met Yara, I think. Um, so, I, so whatever it was, there's some type of history between Jovi and the stripper. And it's not like just some random dancer. It's someone that he knows that they've traveled together with, that there's some type of a connection between him and this young lady. So, um, Ed said that he wanted, uh, that Jovi wanted her to come out and hang out with them. And, um, Ed is such a, catalyst you know he's just dropping these bombs trying to blow up these relationships because he wants to make it look like him and Liz are the number one couple so he loves and I understand that Ed brought up this stripper and Jovi texting her and asking her to come out with them I know he did that simply because you know Jovi exposed him and Jovi told Yara that Ed was really handsy with the strippers and so Ed wanted to get right back at him I get that but Ed is very 
Ed can be really mean, like extremely, extremely mean. And I know he probably, that comes from a lot of insecurities that he has with himself. So he always wants to attack before he's attacked, but he can be very downright, you know, just nasty and mean. He did give some good tea though, but he was still mean. So Yara tells Angela, Yara walks away. She throws a drink on Jovi. She throws a drink on him. She walks away. And then Yara tells Angela that this was the stripper that Jovi had a relationship with. Um, she comes back to the group and she asks Jovi, let me see your phone. Of course, Jovi wasn't going to give her his phone. And he goes, you know what? Let's just end this right now. It's over. It's done with. Let's just end it. So, um, Jovi does tell us that he did hook up with her. Ed tells Yara that, you know, Jovi loves you. He really does love you, but he just has this weakness. Like all men have some type of a weakness. And Yara says it's not a weakness, it's an obsession. So let's talk about Jovi's obsession with strippers. So in the last episode, Jovi told us how when he was 16 years old, he would sneak into the strip clubs, right? For free. He would sneak into the strip clubs and watch the show go down. So I'm thinking maybe because at the tender age of 16, this was his first exposure to this type of, you know, this was his, his first, um, like maybe sexual encounter, right? Not necessarily like a physical encounter, but like a visual encounter. Maybe this was his first visual encounter of what goes, of just, you know, it, it, it woke up his sexuality, let's say. Maybe he just woke up his sexuality at the age of 16. And because this was the first time that his sexuality got tapped into, this is what he always gravitates towards. Like if your first experience is with a certain type of person, sometimes you kind of you kind of gravitate towards people who are similar to that who gave you that first experience. So maybe that's where Jovi, maybe that's where this obsession with strippers comes from because maybe this was the first time that his sexuality was awakened, uh, the first time that he had this, you know, I don't know, he felt this attraction to these types of women. I don't know, but I think it's got something to do with that and that's why he's so obsessed with this type of entertainment. So Ed and Jovi, they start blaming each other on, you know, like you're exposing me, you know, you're exposing me. You started it. You started it, whatever, whatever. Ed then brings up Jovi's daughter. I think he says something like, are you going to explain to your daughter why you're so obsessed with strippers or something to that effect? I'm not, you know, quoting him verbatim, but somehow or another, Ed brought up Jovi's daughter. This put the fire under Jovi because he shot up and he was like, don't you dare talk about my daughter. Don't put my daughter's name in your mouth. And he acted like he was going to, you know, punch Ed. People had to come in between them and keep them separated because it was about to go down. Yara even had to step in and say, yeah, Ed, thank you for the info. Thank you for the intel. But please don't bring up my child. My child has got nothing to do with any of this. Liz is there as well. And she also had gotten up to try to like hold Ed back the whole entire time, especially when Ed brought up the daughter, the whole entire time, you know, Liz is trying to get Ed to calm down, shut up, stop talking, sit down because she knows it's about to get really, really out of hand. Ed was really nasty for bringing up their child. That was strictly just to hit below the belt, to hit them where it hurts. He was, it was just uncalled for not necessary he just did, did it just for the simple um for the simple sake of being mean and nasty and trying to get them to react moving on from there Oswello and Kalani so they meet up um at Oswello's uh room and you know Kalani she's all like you know so how are you feeling <laughs> And, you know, Oswello's like, whatever. And, you know, Kalani tells him, I know you're going to need time to process this. And um, Kalani says, she tells him straight up, I think we should file for divorce right away. Because, you know, she wants to try to be, I guess she's trying to make it real legit now between her and Dallas. But she claims that she's, for the sake of the children, um, she wants to have this divorce right away. And what, what choice does he have but to go along with it? Back at the boat, Ed tries to give Liz kisses. And Liz is like, get away from me. I'm not feeling it. And Liz says, you always put me in unsafe situations. She tells Ed, you always put me in unsafe situations, which is true. Jovi um, tries to downplay his actions. He's like, you know what? I don't know what the big deal is. I don't know why Yara is so upset. You know, we just, I, I'm out with the guys having a good time. Nothing happened. I said, I was sorry. I don't know why we just can't move on. Yara and Jovi are now talking in their own room. And Yara says that if the stripper show, if the stripper would have shown up, she felt like Jovi and the stripper would have hooked up. And Jovi's like, no, that wouldn't have happened. Yara tells Jovi 
that no Jara tells us that Jovi told her if she wasn't so good looking he would not still be with her so I don't know what to believe with this whole Yara and Jovi thing because like I said on like I said on social media like on TikTok they seem to be fine when they do their lives they seem to be fine but on this show, it's like they're on the verge of divorce because of Jovi's obsession with strippers and all this other stuff. He's addicted and all this other stuff. So I don't know exactly what's going on between Yara and Jovi. Um, I'm looking at Yara whenever she cries to see if she's crying real tears or she's trying to make herself cry. I can't really tell what's going on. Like I said, I'm very confused. If these are real issues between them, then Jovi needs help. And not only does Jovi need help, but I don't think Jovi really likes Yara as a wife. Obviously he finds her attractive physically, but I don't think that he really likes her as a wife because I think Jovi, I mean, I think Yara is the kind of wife that holds him accountable. She don't take no crap and she holds him accountable. And I don't think Jovi's down with that. And plus, you know, Yara can be a little bit, you know, she's, she's tough. Yara is a tough woman. She says exactly what's on her mind. Um, she doesn't mince her words. She's not one of those, you know, Gentile Southern bells, you know, just follow my husband wherever he goes. She is not that. So maybe Jovi is not used to the force that is Yara. And maybe that's why he's always running away to the strip clubs. Later on, Ed and Liz, they're together in their room. And Ed is once again, mad at Liz. He says that she should have not interfered, not interjected herself when um, Jovi was about to punch his lights out. Um, so Yara, so, uh, what's her name? Liz is like, what the hell do you want me to do? Because at first I wasn't doing enough, you know, between you and Angela or whatever the hell I wasn't doing enough. Now I'm doing too much. Now between him and Angela, between him and, uh, Kelly. Now I'm doing too much. So what the hell do you want me to do? So he's like, well, I'm the man and you're the woman and the man is supposed to protect the woman, not the other way around. So I guess he felt kind of like, you know, he felt emasculated because Liz stood up and tried to protect him from Jovi. I guess. I don't know. Ed has a lot of issues. Ed has a lot of issues. At this damn uh, commitment ceremony, I think that all the women need to just choose themselves and not these men. Thank you so much for joining me. I really do appreciate it on your way out. Please don't forget to rate the video if you like this content. Subscribe to my channel and I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.